Welcome to in-game chat. Uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you now. <laughs> Prep yourself, folks. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be in for uh, in for a show here today, as far as what might be happening, what could possibly happening, and what likely will uh, happen as well. Uh, for starters, our audio situation. Um, I think I made it up here about ten minutes ago, ten minutes before we aired, and was rushing to get everything done and taking phone calls and everything else. We've got some severe weather in the area coming in it's been around it's just going we had a bunch of it this morning we had a bunch of it this afternoon we're gonna have some of it tonight we're gonna have some more later in the week uh yeah and so i'm here to assist some people downstairs <laughs> so i may be going back and forth and it's just a little hectic uh very very hectic so i don't necessarily have everything like i said i was sitting here before we went on i said i feel like i'm forgetting something Anytime, I need to trust that judgment because anytime I do, inevitably, I figure out, oh, that's what I forgot. Go with your gut. Always go with your gut. Ah, man. Anyway. So, what could happen is, uh, at any point, and we don't know when, but at any point, uh, I may need to leave the studio for a few minutes. Um, RJ will be taking over at that point. Um and so, yeah, I know you, you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it, man. Yeah. You sure. can do it. You can do it. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's a possibility, um, of what's going on. So yeah, just, uh, this is, it's all this stuff, uh, happening right now. I mean, if you ever, if you, if you got a, uh, weather map handy, go to, just go to Alabama and you can see what's going on, um, and, and figure out what we're in for right now. It's, Our weather map is very colorful right now. It's really colorful. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly green, some red and yellow in there as well. I'm seeing some purple. I don't know what that means. I don't know, I don't know, yeah, what, I don't know what purple. I don't means. know. I've never seen purple. They're before. looking at they're looking at velocity. I think they're looking at wind velocity because that's what we're worried about right now is wind and hail. Um, is currently uh, our concern in the area. But there's other counties within our um, uh, within our our listener base who uh, is dealing who are dealing with with something else as well. So anyway, I just want to give you a heads up on that. That was the reason that I, didn't, I forgot done. Forgot to plug in the audio cable. Um, so, yeah, I got that fixed. And welcome to In Game Chat for Saturday, April 24th, 2021. It is season uh, 15, episode 14. Uh, I'm Scott. And I'm RJ. Thank you so much. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228, 334-272-9228. Check out ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at Ingame Chat. You can also find us on Facebook. You can email us, everyone, at ingamechat.net. We are streaming right now uh, with audio and video uh, on Twitch. Go to twitch.tv. You can find us there. Um, just go to our website and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's a long scroll, but go all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see all the links to where you can find us, our Discord, our um, uh, YouTube channel, our Twitch channel. It's all right there to make it just easier for you to get in touch with us, which is what we want. We want to hear from you. So uh, welcome to the show. And forgive me again if my head is, uh, if I get a little floaty with the conversation because I'm trying to think about other things, make sure I'm not being paged to have to come downstairs. It's all very, very important. Um, But welcome. Uh, I'm going to start with what I played in the event that I need to go down, and then you can take over and tell us what you played. (laughs) Uh, I actually... um, I put in a lot of time. I, I played some Destiny. I actually haven't put in, eh, I put in a lot of time this morning, but that's usually what I do on a Saturday morning. During the week, it's the Guardian Games, right? Yeah. And so it's sort of like an Olympic thing or whatever. I don't know. It's, it's a stupid... Well, we have a lot to talk about with Destiny, by the way. Uh, I say a lot to talk about. It's not really a lot in the sense that we have some... <laughs> Here's the thing. Anytime Bungie announces something, it always works to Lethal Migraine's credit <laughs> for what he says about the company. 
Like I know he's yeah. he has a lot of harsh words for Destiny and Bungie and and even for me for playing mm-hmm. him, but most of the time he's not wrong yeah. on some of those things. I think what I heard basically was something something along the lines of, "Wow, we thought you got away from Activision to stop doing things like uh-huh. this, and then you do exactly what you what Activision was doing now." Yeah, no, it's you're, bad. Cor- we'll, you're, you're corrupted now. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into it. Um, yeah, we'll get into that. But yeah, I played some Destiny uh, through the week, and then I played some this morning. And you know, that's what I did. What else did I play? Cozy Grove. I played today. On I took a week off of playing that thing, and you know, logged back in. It's day three. I spent maybe twenty minutes, and then it said, "Hey, you're done. There's really nothing else for you to do here. You can go and scavenge and you know collect materials and all this other stuff. Your story's not going to progress any further than you've made it. So come back tomorrow." Mm-hmm. It's kind of, it's kind of nice. And by the way, it doesn't. This was an interesting way to kind of test that. Uh, there's no sort of like FOMO, you know, fear of missing out mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, I logged in day one and day two, which were back to back days, and then I spent a week before I logged back in. And when I did, it's like day three. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say that I've oh you've been you know none of the none of the inhabitants like in Animal Crossing I'm like where have you been. Or, you know, burn the island down because there's, no, uh, there's no authority around town or something like that. One of the inhabitants gets drunk or something. I don't know. But there's nothing like that. You just kind of you pick up where you left off, uh, which is kind of nice. And it's only like, you know, 20 minutes. It's got some nice music, which you'll hear uh, in today's episode at some point, maybe. By the way, when we cut in to, to broadcast this weather stuff, it's very likely we'll be cutting into this show. Um, you won't hear it on the stream, by the way because of the way we've got the audio set up. but uh, And by the stream, I mean Twitch. If you're listening to the radio station stream, you will hear it, because we need you to hear that. But um, for everybody on, the, uh, on Twitch, you're, you're not going to hear it. Yeah. So uh, we won't know when we're interrupted by anything. We, we, have, we won't have any idea when that happens. So um, played Cozy Grove. I played... She's telling me, you played Rocket League. You played it. Uh, did I? I never played it, though. I just logged in today mm-hmm. for the first time in probably since the thing released. I was about to say ever. Yeah, whatever year it was that it released, I probably played it a few times at mm-hmm. the initial release and a, and a couple of others. But after that, I never touched it again. Obviously, the thing took off and was huge. And that's fine. Yeah. It, it, that was I, It just... It was never any really anything that hooked me, but I don't necessarily know that I really gave it a chance to hook into me. It was... It well, 2015. Felt, huh? Came out in 2015. Yeah. It was kind of chaotic for me to understand. It's like... It was... It was almost like airplane dogfights uh, when I used to play them, when I would play them in video games and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I say airplane dogfights. This also works for, you know, when space dogfights type stuff, anything like that. When you're in a moving vehicle trying to shoot another moving vehicle, mm-hmm. um, especially with flying, and I guess with cars too, it can be very tough to like stay on target type of thing. Oh yeah, physics. You know? uh, physics uh, the physics really plays a uh, real mean part in that game because you're not trying to. First of all, you're not trying to shoot anything. You're trying to physically hit it with your vehicle. You got to hit it so with you your vehicle. Hit it with yeah. vehicle. So the ball is big enough to hit, but if you're trying to hit another uh, hit another defender. Uh, take him or her out of the equation, and that car's moving erratically across the field. Sometimes you miss, and when you miss, it's going to take you a long time to pull around and recover. So um, I've seen videos where people have done little tricks with the car. They've been able to jump and hit the ball and bounce it up and things like that. And you, No, there's some exceptional yeah. players. Yeah, there's some really there's good some players amazing in this players in this thing. High skill players. And, and, and it's, it's like I was telling her, I said, uh, this for me is more fun of a game to watch really good players play. Yeah, it's 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 almost like Evo. Yeah, um, I'm not good at fighting games whatsoever, but I am entertained by people who mm-hmm. are good at playing them, playing together, playing at a, you know against each other. Games played at a high level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are real fun to watch, and that's mm-hmm. not always the case. Like you put any other, you put any sports game, any game that is related to sports, golf, football, basketball, any of those things, even baseball. It's not going to be fun for me to watch. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll, I'll give it to MLB The Show that that might be fun to play, mm-hmm. but that also would not be fun for me to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather just either watch real baseball or play that game. Um, I've never been into the, the, the football or basketball or anything like that, but stuff like this, that competitiveness, even the League of Legends stuff, I would say no, and mm-hmm. Smite and those things, uh-uh. Uh, th- those don't 
those don't I don't get the th- I don't get that sense or that thrill of competition yeah. like I do in a fighting game or in Rocket League um or even in watching uh you know people stream uh, trials on Destiny or something like mm-hmm. that some high competitive play uh, yeah that's that's what's more that's what's interesting to me so mm-hmm. um but yeah I logged into it today on my Switch and obviously I hadn't logged into it since it was on my PS4 so it recognized that I had an Epic Games account because now Epic owns Rocket League. Mm. Um, and so it recognized I had that account. I had to log in with that, connect my Switch account. And then it had all these others. It's like, do you want to connect your PlayStation 5? Do you want to connect your Xbox? Do you want to connect your Steam account? So I got all of those connected as well. And like all this stuff poured in because <laughs> it's been years since I've played the thing. I'm but apparently, well, apparently because I've been, because I've had the game since it launched. Mm hmm. They've given out free stuff, you yeah. know, by the dozens, and I just haven't logged in, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 claim, you know, all this stuff came through. Yeah. Um, it's free to play now, though, isn't it? Free to play, and you just buy perks and things like that? Uh, I, I haven't played it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you, it's, all, it, it's all cosmetic. There's nothing, yeah. It, yeah. It's cosmetic, yeah. Just uh, different, different cars and things like that, um, different little little uh, doohickeys you can put on your vehicle modifications and things of that nature but I think it's, it was because um, you know, I remember I bought the game but now I see it's like free to play and there's little things you can get from the shop and stores and things like that but yeah it's a, it's very interesting to watch um, it's fun to play and practice and see how much you can bend physics when you got a little car with rockets on it yeah uh, all type well, of thing like that. You like, know, watching watching some other people play and, and kind of looking at it again because I really never gave it a, a, a second look. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kinda, I'm kind of interested. I want to I want to I want to jump back in it and see if there's a if there's a hook there that maybe I didn't give it time enough for way back when uh, to see if they've improved it in some way that it's like oh this is you know this I, it's again it's a game that I just did not yeah pay attention to mm-hmm. after 2015. I mean I heard that it was very successful became a good competitive sport. Uh, competitive game yeah but it's one i just never paid attention to Mm -hmm. Uh, about the only time i paid attention to it was when they would do the themed dlc vehicles and stuff because i know there's a back to the future dlc Mm -hmm. obviously now that i'm playing this i want that car Mm -hmm. Uh, but there was also a couple of others that they did as well but none of that d and this is what i looked up none of that dlc is in the game anymore um until epic fixes some of the they have to renegotiate contracts now oh okay because all of this was done under under psionics i think psionics yeah it was done under them but of course now that their parent company is epic it doesn't uh it doesn't carry over they have yeah, to we renegotiate. dealt with psionics we didn't deal with that yeah so and so yeah. they're trying to do that uh because that's a there was a lot of dlc it wasn't mm-hmm. just that it was fun on the switch to see that i have a mario car and a metroid car mm-hmm. that was kind of cool but um yeah so I kind of want to look into Rocket League, and then I played, is it Yoku's Island Express? Yoku's Island Express. Uh, that is a platform-like pinball game. Platform pinball, okay. Yeah, yeah. There are segments of platforming, and then you go into segments of pinballing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so which one is more like a bonus stage than, than the other? Uh, pinball. Pinball park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pinball would be your bonus stage. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, they force you into, you've got, I mean, the way the game is set up, it, that's what it's supposed to be. It's a pinball hybrid platform thing. It's more pinball than platform. Mm. Uh, in other words, you're this little bitty bug who is tethered, tethered to this stone. And you roll, you know, you push the stone. And if the stone goes down a hill, it just drags a little bug with him. And uh, you'll get into situations where there's flippers and, you know, you hit things and capture fruit and all this other stuff. It's... I don't know how much was it. Fourteen bucks. Less than that. Oh, it, must, it was on sale, wasn't it? Like six bucks. Okay. You know, on on Switch. Hmm. So, which is fine by me because that's a great little portable game. Portable, you know. Yeah. Little portable pinball, and it, that's good. I don't. I don't really want to. Yeah. See, AC Wraith knows he plays pinball. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does the pinball thing, and he says that was fun. So, I guess it's been out for a while. I don't know how long it's been out, but. It was. All, I missed it off my radar. It was, I didn't recognize it, other than the fact that I first read it as Yoshi's Island Express. Mm. I can see that because it's close to Yoshi, and it is a Nintendo system. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was that, and twenty eighteen. Okay, and mm-hmm. I also played Dorf Romantique or Romantic Dorf, Dorf Romantic. Romantic. 
we talked about this. It is a um, it's a city builder strategy type thing, mm-hmm. and I gave it a little run of it on Sunday morning, uh, last Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, enjoyed it. It's sort of what you would call a relaxing type of thing. It's it's a very mellow. Got some music going. There's no time. You know, you're not trying to beat a clock. You're not shooting enemies. You're just trying to place tiles to expand your city yeah. and have a certain amount of forestry, rails, water, uh, crops, uh, things like, and housing and things like that. And so, but you've got tiles yeah. that you have to play. It's a lot like solitaire. It's like, here's your next card, figure out a way to play this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, uh, so it's like a lighter version of City Skylines, and not not as many, not as much details you got to look into. It's just a city ca- a sky- down. Yeah, City Skylines and even Sim City itself are very open, massive. Uh, start your planning from the beginning. It's, it's nothing like that yeah. in this. It's toned down. It's extremely toned yeah. down. It is extremely toned down. I would. Re- it feels more like uh, if if folks who have played it. Carcassonne, is that the right thing that I'm saying? Is it Carcassonne? No, 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 no. It's not Carcassonne. It's um, God, it was on the Xbox 360. I think it starts with a C. Catan, Settlers of Catan, mm. uh, which is also a board game. Okay. Um, so yeah, it gives. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, Settlers of Catan, Catan, but not a multiplayer type of thing. It's sort of single player. You're still not trading tiles for wood and all this other stuff, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Uh, and is that it? I think that's all that I played. I think that's I think that's all. I okay. think that's all I really dipped my toe in mm-hmm. to. I did download MLB The Show. Yeah. Uh, and so I haven't played it yet. I keep forgetting that I actually uh, did download it. Let me check my phone here. I'm getting some text coming in. Um, just to let you know, I've left my phone on. And for some reason, it is not. It's not uh, registering for whatever the texts aren't coming through. There mm. we go. Silent mode is off. Okay. Hopefully, uh, I start getting these things because I, I want to know whenever stuff like this comes through. Go figure. The day you need text, it doesn't want to give you text. Well, go I'm figure. getting them on my phone and everything else. Maybe uh, maybe there's something on uh, with my. F- you know what? I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to turn my phone with uh, turn the volume on on my phone mm. or on my watch. That's what okay. I'm saying. Anyway, we're sorry about this, but it's it's got to be done, and there's there's no real way around this. It is, um, uh, you know, we talked about this before. I've come in on a weekend before, I think a Sunday, uh, because there was uh, threats of tornadoes, and we wanted to be on the air mm-hmm. for that. It is, yep. I think, a radio station's first and foremost thing, and and for what this is, is uh, a public service to yep. alert the public of things. And that's exactly what this is, especially when you, I mean, you know what it's like with tornadoes around here. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so when that comes, uh, without question, I'm handing it over to RJ and I'm running down to do my job. So mm-hmm. uh, just letting you know. We've got to take a break here. And when we come back, we will have RJ telling us what he played. We've got music here from another game that is on Game Pass that I'm kind of interested in. I looked at the trailer. In fact, this is from the trailer. I don't know if this music is actually in the game. It was nice enough. There wasn't any... You know, there wasn't any uh, dialogue or anything like that that would have that would have interrupted it. You might hear some sound effects, but it's a game called Rain on Your Parade. Hmm. You play as a cloud <laughs> who goes around and ruins people's events. Oh, okay. I think I've seen. I think I've seen pictures of this. Yeah, you. Uh, You're you, basically a troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. you go around and you find a wedding and you rain on it. You go around and you find. Oh, God, I hope they put gender reveals. And you <laughs> rain on it. <laughs> I really hope they put that in there. But, yeah, so uh, we got Rain on Your Parade. Uh, it's the release date trailer music from this. A little bit of editing because they actually started off with a wedding. Uh, but, yeah, so we'll be back with more of in-game chat right after this.
And welcome back to In Game Chat. <laughs> right when we did that, I had to go downstairs. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I just got back upstairs. So, yeah, lots uh, lots going on. What was I going to say? Um, oh, that music. That was from a game that is recently released. I think it came out this week. It's called Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. <laughs> The originality of these titles are starting to get really good. Now. Aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Turnip so, Boy yeah. commits tax. Now, I have read that, and see, this is where I really should just employ without pay. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 Brock Spigot, because he plays things like this. Mm-hmm. He discovers things like this. He, find, he finds the uh, the little quirky titles that you don't hear about he, all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, he always has. Um, he used to write a column for our old website called Turning the Spigot, because that was his... That was his name on the, mm-hmm. on the forums was Spigot. And uh, he'd write up these lengthy articles about these hidden gems, these little independent games. But he never failed to, I mean, he hit every single one of them. It was like, this is fantastic. I yeah. love this. And so uh, that, I got to figure that's something that he has played or he's got his eye on anyway. Yeah, Turnip look. Boy Commits Tax Evasion. Yeah. Uh, look up the trailer if you're yeah, curious yeah. about it uh, just to see. Uh, what it might be. I thought it was based on that stupid stuff we do in Animal Crossing every Sunday, which is buy mm-hmm. turnips and mm-hmm. then sell them on the stalk market. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it's literally called that. Um, so I thought it was based on that in some way. But yeah, Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. Let's mm-hmm. go to the phones real quick and talk to Chris. Hey, Chris. What's going on? Not much. Have you played Turnip Boy commits tax evasion? I uh, never heard of it until you were talking about it just now. Yeah, I haven't I haven't watched the trailer. The name alone has me interested. And then, from what I understand, I read some articles saying it is one of the funniest games they've ever played. That was some review site that said that. So uh, I'm kind of curious about it. But what's going on? Enjoying this nice weather we've been having here lately with all the off and on raining and thunderstorming like nutty today. But, uh, yeah, a good time to get out the Switch and put it in handheld mode and enjoy it since I don't have everything else unplugged. Oh, that's true. Ooh, I forgot to unplug all my stuff at home. I just realized that. Um, uh, what? Okay, I have to go downstairs. Mm-hmm. You and Chris have the conversation. Okay. <laughs> okay. I gotta get good. Yeah, I believe he's going to get some help to go buy his house. I believe, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I don't blame him one bit. Yep. Because remember the last time he didn't uh, have his stuff unplugged, he like. Uh, the computer was acting up like I uh, couldn't get it on, and then uh, the thing was just malfunctioning uh, crazily because of that. But yeah, he's been um, adamant about unplugging everything when storms come in. But um, but you've already done that for your place, right? Oh yeah, we we always do that if we're away from the house for any time, like if we're gonna be gone all day, we just go through and unplug everything. If we're not using it, you know, no sense for it to be plugged up. And if it starts storming, we don't have to worry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've gotten a good habit of doing that, and, and that's just one less worry we have to worry about. Yeah, that's true. It's true, man. But yeah, I was going through and cleaning out the old closet and stuff, and found a lot more room. I want to uh, move some of my game systems and collection, and it's, you know, it's been cluttered and stacked full of stuff for all these years, and it's, it's so clean now. It's almost giving me a damn a darn heart attack looking at how clean it is, and I've got a metal shelf in there and got stuff on it, and. It looks completely different than what I've seen in years and years. Yep. And now, and now, as you play games, you get more and more stuff. The stuff you collect, and you're gonna yeah. Figure I, I want to always where else you put it all in there. <laughs> yeah, because like you and me and other people, uh, there's no such thing as me stopping collecting. <laughs> no, I mean, if something's gonna keep coming out, and we want to pick it up. We want to get it. Something nostalgic, something new, or whatever. It's always some limited edition or something that we want to always want to pick up. Yep. So, so any pick up, pick up any uh, collectible things lately? No, not really recently, but. Uh, uh, I, I ordered some uh, still copies of the, uh, the of the Odd World games that were on the Xbox. I think the uh, Exodus, not Exodus, uh, Munchies Odyssey, and mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and and the, the one with the Stranger's Wrath or whatever. Yeah, I got those on the the, the limited edition of the on uh, those two on the Switch, brand new. So yeah. that's the only thing I've got recently. But uh, I've also been going through a bunch of old boxes and stuff, and uh, old Hot Wheels and stuff that I'm going to donate. And you remember the old laser tag? From the from the eighties, you know the old, uh, you know the solid black gun that uh, had yeah. the laser light up on both sides at the front of the barrel. Yeah, I found my old uh, pointer of that. I found the old laser gun and and receiver. And of course, uh, 
the laser gun had, you know, I lost the back connection for the battery compartment, but the, the electrical tape, I had the, the batteries in there all these years. I said, uh-oh, corrosion. Corrosion, it, yeah, yeah. bad, exactly. but uh, I got it cleaned out, and I got it working again this afternoon. No, it maybe took me like 20 minutes, but I fixed up me a little connector on a little small block of wood and used electrical tape to, to push it back in there and hold it together to, to, uh, to connect those batteries, and darn thing still works. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, it, it says, what, it, it says, what, it was like 80 Two eighty three, something. It was in eighty eighties. Yeah, I think. early, early eighties. Yeah, I remember that TV show they made on NBC on uh, Saturday morning cartoons too. They made it as well, but um, yeah. So man, I don't think you can find anything like that on eBay or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you, I have no idea what we're talking about. I don't think you can. <laughs> laser tag. Yeah, yeah laser I found tag. the old laser tag oh, from the mid eighties. Yeah, laser I had a, tag. I had a oh, lunchbox. Oh. I had a laser tag lunchbox. Mm-hmm. Not metal. It was plastic. Based on the. Saturday morning cartoon? Yeah. Yeah. Not the actual. Well, that was based on, of course, the toy. But, yeah, it was based on the Saturday morning cartoon. Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry I missed the conversation, Chris. (laughs) Yeah, you had to make a phone call and get somebody to go over to your house, huh? No, no, no. I had to go downstairs uh, for Uh, Rich Thomas and put him on the air. Yeah, 1984, uh, by the way. Yeah. So that's what's going to be happening here is that I'm going to have to, from time to time, go downstairs and get him on the air to talk about things going on around us with the weather. So, yeah. no, I have nobody to call to go over to the house and turn that's everything why I, off. That's why I say no, I brought that up, and you had to go downstairs, and I was wondering, I wonder if he's going to get help to go over there, but be no. nice if he did, huh? I should have left my, I, I, I have a way to remotely log in. I should have left that up. I normally don't, because I'm like, I don't want anybody else getting this thing, so I normally don't leave it up, but I should have, so I could log in and turn the thing off. Anyway. Uh, Chris, we appreciate you calling as always. Uh, stay safe out there with the weather we got coming, man. All right, y'all do, and uh, we'll cross your fingers for you. All right, buddy, thanks. All right, bye. Thanks, bye. Take care now. Uh-huh. Yeah, you hear the thunder? The thunder. Thunder. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, yeah. You can see, see the can't look at that. I don't know where that's looking out towards, but, I mean, that's a lot of rain. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of rain coming our way. Big clouds hovering over the city, folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna get some. It's it's gonna get it's gonna get worse. Uh, I think here, maybe for some of you, I'm sure it will actually. But yeah, <clears throat> so bad weather day here mm-hmm. on the show. Um, did you go over? You haven't talked about the games that you've uh, no, played yet. this week. Go not go yet. right ahead and <clears throat> jump into that, man. Well, uh, played a little bit of a uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh, 11 Ultimate, played a little bit of that. Still gathering more bits and pieces of equipment for my characters in the game. So I got a few more bits and pieces there and just uh, played a little bit of training mode, uh, all the little single-player modes, things like that, and uh, had a little fun with that. Played some uh, Street Fighter V as well. They released uh, Rose as a character of, of, Street oh, yeah, Fighter, yeah, yeah. of Street Fighter Alpha fame. They put her in there, and people have been having a really, really good time with her. I've seen some very lengthy, extensive, and very damaging combos made with her. Um, that's what, what he means by good time, folks. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good time, yeah. <laughs> that's this is the type of things you watch on Evo and and are amazed by seeing people have the skill to pull things like this off. Please understand, you're talking to people who play video games. Nothing here is going to be <laughs> meaning in any other way. Yeah, but just that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, she's got a lot of tools and talents that she can uh, bring to the, bring to the table. Uh, one of which is like uh, extending her. Uh, hits her attacks with a shadow copy. So basically she uh she does an attack and her shadow follows right up with its with one of its own. And that extends uh extends combos and um all types of stuff. Uh Soul Satellite, she's got that from Alpha Three. She's got a little move that lets her uh have this energy orb uh rotate around her body and adds more hits to her stuff as well. And also that scarf that she has, she can reach out and snatch somebody and pull them in. Um I mean she's she's a real lot she's a lot, she's a lot of fun to play with and uh a lot of fun to see in action. So, um, right now, people are thinking she's broken because basically she's brand new and nobody knows everything about her yet. What you can punish, what you can uh, deal with, and whatnot. But then Dan was the same way. When Dan first came out, people thought he was broken because people didn't know what he was capable of, and he was capable of, capable of a lot. He had a matter of fact, he had an infinite, he had an infinite combo in that game um, when he first came out. People took uh, no time in finding that out and executing it uh, online against people. So Dan, who was traditionally supposed to be weak, was pretty darn on strong in this game. So Rose pretty much the same way. But give it time, people will figure it out and uh, figure out a way to deal with her and everything whatnot. Also played a little bit of um, Streets of Rage 4 in yeah. anticipation of the um, 
new DLC coming out. I think I mentioned uh, last show. Also had a little bit of fun with um, R Type Final on PS3. Hey, R Type, nice. R Type Final on PS3 because um, it comes out on the thirtieth. R Type Final two comes out on thirtieth. Side scrolling shmup, side scrolling shooter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the one with the uh, force unit, mm-hmm. the one that you can send out and then pull back. Yeah, that uh, that little aspect has always uh, made it stand out to me. But uh, I played a bit of uh, Final on the PS3. Um, had a good time with that. Unlocking, I had had all my ships unlocked, so I was going through that, playing with all the different types that were available, which is most likely going to be the same case with R-Type Final 2, uh, trying to unlock ships and seeing all the different types of uh, ways you can uh, modify your ship to go through the uh, go through the game. And for the mo- and at, what I played most this week was uh, MLB The Show uh, 21. Unfortunately, um, the game was having a lot of issues in terms of uh, server uh, server problems. Who? Which one? Was it might be the show. A lot oh. of server, a lot of server problems was going on with the game. I heard it was really hard to find stadiums. <laughs> That's what I read in a headline. Fair, no, no, like that. some no, of the like, custom made stadiums. It was really hard to find on the on the list or something, like, or, or to download or whatever. No, some uh, of the probably things ones. from the shop or whatever logos and things like no stuff idea. stuff from the vault or everything like that. But no, it was basically server errors that they were uh, having to deal with, and they were trying to uh, get it fixed. So they had to periodically take it down a few days. So day one. You had issues with the server, and then a couple of days later, you had more issues, and they just started taking it down. So you couldn't play any uh, Diamond Dynasty, uh, <clears throat> Diamond Dynasty mode, or or uh, anything like that. You couldn't play online because things kept getting taken off. Uh, so you couldn't really do. You were hamstrung. You couldn't do as much as you wanted to in the game. Uh, last time I checked, it was uh, stable as is, but who knows? At any given time, they may have to take it down again to fix something else because there's still a work in progress. They're still trying to get and look into it and see what they can see, but. Uh, during the time that I did play, and, um, and it, everything was stable, I was able to build my uh, Diamond Dynasty team, uh, get some uh, players on there, and start uh, building things up. Um, it's kind of like your, kind of like Destiny, like in seasons when you try to build up and play mm-hmm. and uh, get gear and things like that. Same thing applies here in uh, it will be the show. You just play the game and get more um, XP, and you earn more things as you get more experience in the game. And it's also double XP weekend. So you can get those things really, really quick. So the more you play, uh, it's like, uh, I think it's called the first inning uh, aspect. Um, I, like I said, I downloaded it, haven't even cracked it open yeah. to know. Well, it's something like where you, the more XP you gain, the more things you get. And it's like at a certain point you gain, if you gain 5,000 XP in the game, uh, you get a pack to open to get more players for your, for your Diamond Dynasty team. Uh, get get 6,000, you get this. Get 7,000, you get this. And it keeps going down and down the line. Until I think the max was six hundred fifty thousand uh, XP, and you got about two weeks to get there. Mm-hmm. It, it is possible because I played. I only played uh, one game so far, and I did pretty well. And I was able to get around eight thousand XP, double double XP weekend, so I got about eight thousand. So if I just keep playing consistently over and over again, I shouldn't have uh, too much time spent in getting to that point. Just depending on how well you play. So um, I'll be playing that. Um, for the next coming weeks to see how much I can get out of it. But uh, that's pretty much what I've been playing this week. All right. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a few minutes here before we have to take our break or maybe before I have to leave again. Uh, I don't know. Um, so the day after we did our show last week, uh, the PlayStation 5 became the fastest-selling console in United States history. Uh, this was according to NPD. The market research group, Sony's console, is the fasting, fastest selling ever in the U.S. in both unit and dollar sales. Um, that's lifetime sales with just five months on the market. They sold 4.5 million units last year. In February, Sony said they were on track to sell over 7.6 million units by the end of March 31st. I guess they probably made that. I don't know. What's interesting to me on this is that it's very hard to find a PS5 or an Xbox right now, um, especially if you're just if you're just casual. I'm going to check. I'm going to call Best Buy and see if they have them, or I'm going to call GameStop and see if they have them, or Walmart or something like that. Yeah, uh, you can't find them. I mean, I was following. I had things on my phone from Twitter and from Discord and from other things that would give me alerts. Anytime, well, right now I'm doing it for GPUs, for, for a graphics card. Uh, but there were also, also those for, for mm-hmm. Xbox and, and Sony. Um, I specifically was waiting for a Best Buy one to pop up and finally got mine. But 
it's, it's hard to believe that it was the fastest selling console when it seems like it's harder to get than any of the previous releases, I would say, uh, from, you know, years back with mm-hmm. the PS4, the PS3, that sort of thing. I know, I remember PS3 was hard to get, but at the same time, PS3 was like, what was the two SKU? $600 and $800? Wasn't that what it was? Sounds about right. Seven ninety nine and five ninety nine. I think mm-hmm. that's what it was for the different PS threes. And so, yeah, those didn't fly off the shelf. Mm-hmm. That was hard. Was yeah. So how much? much so how much of those numbers are from the scalpers? That's a good question. That's a great question. Okay. <laughs> that's probably very because likely. The, because the reason you can't find them is because of the uh, scalping and the bots and the things. That true. That, that that's true. So how much of that figures into these numbers? I mean, they still. I mean, they still sold. So that. Uh, uh, that has to play into it somewhat, but how much of that is um I don't know what it, percentage of those sales is but from it that seems now? like it seems like at this point in a new console's life, five months in or ever how many months it's been mm-hmm. um they'd be on the shelves you'd be able to go get one. It was hard to do I, obviously every year it's you get them when they release and you might get some before Christmas. It's really hard to get a new system under the tree and everything else. Mm-hmm. however, afterwards, by now. Maybe by this, especially by this month or, or mm-hmm. so back, you should be good to go. You know, yeah. you should be able to walk into a store and like, oh, I want, the, I want the new, the new system. Uh, but here it is, it's still hard to do. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's hard for me to figure out. I mean, obviously it's happened, but it's just, I don't know how that works. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know they are flying off the shelves, but I don't think it has anything. It does have to do with scalpers, but I don't know. If where were the scalpers during the PS4 time and during Xbox One, and if they were there, how come? And and and, they, and I think they were prior to Christmas. Mm-hmm. People, that's what they do. They buy a bunch. They try to sell them before Christmas to mm-hmm. people who desperately want them because they can't get them anywhere else. Mm-hmm. But after Christmas, the secondhand market or the 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 resale market or whatever should take a nosedive. Because they should be readily available and people aren't urgent to get them anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not one of those things where it's like, well, we miss Christmas. We'll just get it later, that sort of thing. They can wait. So, I don't know. I, I, again, brain's kind of fried, so I'm not really thinking hard into this. And I'm probably missing something that is uh, mentioned in the chat room that, um, that I've completely overlooked. Because I feel like I'm dumb. I feel like I'm dumb on this. Like, no, here's the reason. You just said it. They're, the scalpers are buying them, and that's why they're selling out. Mm-hmm. But it feels different because mm-hmm. the scalpers are still in this mm-hmm. for both systems. Yeah. They are still in this. So, yeah. The demand is still ridiculously high. So, yeah, there's profit to be eh. made there. So, that's it. Okay. So, Lethal Migraine says there was not a chip shortage during PS4 and Xbox One. Well, if there was a chip shortage, how could it be the fat? Well, it says fastest selling, not most selling. Is that what I see? Fastest selling. They sold that many in that amount of time. All right. So it's not most. It's just they sold that many that quick. So you could actually have, okay, that, see, there's where the stupid comes in. (laughs) Because I finally put that into perspective. Like, no, 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 they're saying that between this amount of time, this many were sold. They're not saying that this beat uh, the record of how many were sold uh, well, I guess so. From here to here, it would have to if it was the fastest selling. Uh, I don't know. It just seems odd. Fastest to reach 5 million units? Fastest to reach 4.5 million units. Okay, fastest to reach 4.5 million yeah. units. Well, I don't know. They could either say that or they could say that from this time in a five-month period, here's how many they sold and it's the mm-hmm. fastest selling console. We always, I don't know if they always look at five-month periods, but it's NPD. They look at these things. They know. Okay. Um. Well, let's read the article. This comes from Eurogamer. It's a remarkable success for the supply-constrained PS5, which Sony launched amid the pandemic. Demand for the PS5 has heavily outstripped supply, and it remains out of stock at a raft of retailers who have faced trouble with scalpers and bots. The Nintendo Switch continues to sell remarkably well, too. Uh, he said the Nintendo Switch has the was the best-selling hardware platform in both units and dollars during the month of March. Nintendo Switch was the unit sales leader in the first quarter of the year, while PS5 ranked first in hardware dollar sales. Um, so, yeah. yeah. What did the chat room say? Uh, Toss down the hallway. Still a lot of bots that put them in carts. First console I got was still my working NES. Last I checked, Lethal Migraine. I, the last time I hooked up my NES probably was back in 2005, I think. Wanted to play some old Mario Kart. 
mm-hmm. um, uh, with a group of us. And I think we eventually got it working, but boy, it was really tough to do because it was, and that was the SNES. Um, it was just flashing, uh, making the screen flash and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. It wasn't, it wasn't working too well. We finally got it to work. I don't remember how and uh, enjoyed a few rounds of Mario Kart. Chase Lull says it was way too hard to get my Series X. Uh, Thar 66, even with uh, Capshaw, they trickle through. Uh, Chase says it took me and two other people fighting timed releases. Then it took two months for it to ship. It was two day shipping, however. Uh, I know I, th- I, this is mostly why I went through Best Buy. Mm-hmm. From what I had heard, uh, because they don't really do shipping, they do in store pickup. Yeah. Um, and. Even then, it's not necessarily a guarantee that it's going to happen. Because I, I remember a lot of people said that they got through, but then they got an email from Best Buy saying, oh, sorry, uh, you're, you're, you're still going to get it because you did pay for it, but it's going to be our next batch mm-hmm. that comes in. Um, yeah, Best Buy has been known to be a little um, iffy on the whether or not you get your yeah. pre-ordered item or not. Ghost of Tsushima comes to mind uh, with their limited edition um, thing that we're going through. Yeah. So, well, good for them on that. Mm. I contributed to that, I guess. Uh, picking up a PS5. What else do we have? Amazon has canceled their Lord of the Rings. Event. Amazon Gaming cannot catch a break. Hmm. They have had to. What did they, they? They just canceled their Lord of the Rings MMO, which I don't know if that was a. It was in development. They announced it in 2019. Oh, they were okay. It was purchased by Tencent in December of last year. A statement given by Amazon reads, the company has been unable to secure terms to proceed with this title at this time. It's disappointed that we won't be bringing this game to customers. Um, The Amazon team working on the game will be moved to other products. Multiple reports have detailed internal struggles at the company's gaming arm. Its team-based shooter, Crucible, was released in May 2020, went back into closed beta in June, and then was ultimately canceled in October, hmm. which is another Amazon game. Another MMO, New World, was has now been delayed three times. It's set to come out in August. In March, Amazon announced a new studio led by the ex-Rainbow Six Siege developers. Um, that was a sign that Amazon intends to keep shooting for the game development stars, despite the mounting evidence this might be a bad idea. Look, Amazon has more money than probably Epic and Apple combined. Uh, it, it, you know, at least their their owner does. Um, they're fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, they'll be it, all right. I mean, they'll they'll find a way to work. They don't care. You know, we talk about. It, I would say any other publisher, maybe studio, who's going through this mm-hmm. would be very hard to climb out of the hole that they've dug. Amazon's just like, hey, if it don't work, it don't work. We don't care about the money we spent because we got more money in the in the back. Mm-hmm. You know, and and. Just oodles and oodles of. Uh, we can afford to try dream. this again. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. We can we can afford. To, you know what? They probably gave severance to the people they had to lay off easily enough, and then you know, either hired a new team or even if they didn't, they probably didn't. They just moved them on to something else, mm-hmm. and probably gave them some pay for what it would have been. I say that like, don't get me wrong. By the way, uh, I'm not a fan of Amazon's business practices. <laughs> I'm not saying, oh, they're just great people for giving the money to the the gaming devs who devs who worked on this and then didn't get to finish it. I don't know that that's the case. And for everything that I've witnessed on everything else that Amazon does, it's not the case. In fact, I'm very curious how people feel working at their game department compared to people who work in their factories, their shipping, and their boxing, and their, and their yeah, you know, all of that stuff that's going on. So who knows? But um, but yeah, there. That's it. So. No Lord of the Rings MMO mm-hmm. coming to uh, Amazon Games, I guess. I don't know how you're going to play that. Is it on their new system that um, starts with an L? It's like Loon or Loom or something. I don't know what it is. Uh, Luna, maybe. I think that's what it is. Maybe It's some kind of streaming video game service that they've oh, offered. Streaming, no about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warner never looked up to it. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Lethal Migraine. As of January 1st, Amazon had $84 billion cash on hand. <laughs> Cash on hand. Yeah, yeah. they're fine. <laughs> Amazon Luna. Excuse me. Bless you. Yeah. Twice. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a break here. We've got music from Cozy Grove. And 
if the name doesn't imply the type of game it is, the music should because, I mean, it's just nothing but relaxing. It is, it is exactly what it says. It's just very cozy. No, nothing to kind of drive you insane. Time limits, shooting. It's just nice. So we're going to go into Cozy Grove and then we'll be back with more of in game chat after this. Welcome back to in-game chats. This is music from a game called Judgment. Mm-hmm. You're probably familiar with it. Yeah, it's like a uh, like Yakuza, but uh, okay, more a little more involved. Yeah, it's called My Own Style. Is the name of the track? Yeah, um, that's honestly the hardest track that we have out of the group here. I've gotten such you know we had Cozy Grove, mm-hmm. Rain on Your Parade, Smooth Listening, Fun Music. What uh, was the What was the other one we first went into? Oh. Uh, uh, What's his name? Turnip Boy commits tax Turnip evasion. Boy, yeah. uh, we got Yoku's Island Express coming up. It's also very nice and whatever. Casual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth, whimsical, funny. And then you got the hardest one we <laughs> got a hard, is uh, rock. And, yeah. I, you know, I say that's the hardest one we got. It's not actually that hard. But out of everything else, yes, it is a drastic change of yeah. of style and, and, and everything else. Genre. Genre. So, anyway, welcome back to the show. You want to get in on this, you can. Give us a call. 272 272- well, hang on. 272-9228. Uh, oh, okay, good. That is absolutely uh, nothing to worry about then. I've kept my phone turned on. I've kept my watch turned on. So anytime I get a any sort of text message, it uh, it alerts me. Mm-hmm. And that was of a uh, a charge that went through. Hmm. So I started doing that because I'm tired of... Uh, Tired of finding out late that my card has been compromised or something like that. So yeah. now I have alerts so that I know what's being what's what's done. Anyway, welcome back to the show. What do we have in the chat room here? I would like to see the world's new chip makers. Amazon isn't good for much, but hosting and retail they should stay in their lane. Um, 
let's see. Looks like Amazon's earnings report is next Thursday. Microsoft is on Tuesday, and Sony is on Wednesday. Eh, we might, I, you know, don't expect these are earnings reports. Don't expect anything out of those as far as any kind of announcements. You might hear something because a lot of them will talk about how well they did, and then they'll also talk about their projections and why mm-hmm. they have those projections. Um, but rarely on these will you hear that they have because they don't make those kind of announcements during those. Right. You might hear something to the effect of we have a game that so-and-so is working on. You might know that, but if that's the case, even then, maybe not. So uh, They're still interesting, but Microsoft, maybe not. Um, well, I don't know. Microsoft or Sony, maybe not. It depends. Are those, and this is, this is Lethal Migraine, tell us in the chat room. If, that, if that's Microsoft in general, I guess it would be broken down and they'll say, well, our games division or our Xbox division. And Sony says, well, here's all this stuff. Oh, and our PlayStation division. Here's what it made. So I guess, yeah, that would be, that would be what it is. So anyway, we'll see what that says. Uh, what else do we have? The cloud gaming beta for Xbox uh, started rolling out for PC and iOS. I think on Android it already exists, but for PC and iOS... Um, something with Apple they're having an issue with uh, because, you know, it's Apple um, about getting this sort of thing to go through on the on the iPhone and on the iPad, anything that's Mac related, uh, some sort of odd thing. I like the idea of it, especially if it works. I can remember. I'm going to tell it myself. This goes back many, many years because I was in that room right in front of me. You can't see it on this camera, but there's a there's a small little room in there. We used to Nate. We used to put in that room. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's where the phone calls used to be fielded. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's where I used to have to sit in the mornings, and where we had to have somebody else sit to answer the calls, and then they would type in who was on whatever line. Mm-hmm. Um, I would bring my Vita. No, my PSP, not my Vita. Mm-hmm. I bring my PSP in, and I would log into Destiny while I was answering phones. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, obviously for the morning show, this was before I was as much of a part of it as I am now. I didn't have my little uh, segments and anything like that. And yeah, a lot more useless. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've become much more useless than I was then or more. Ch- yeah, that's exactly right. I've become a lot more useless <laughs> since then, but, uh, I would sit in there with my PSP. I would lo- I would leave my PlayStation th- four, I guess, or three. I don't know. Can't remember. It's gotta be four. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it could have been the three. Uh, one of those systems I would leave on at the house and have it sort of ready to be connected. Mm-hmm. And then I would bring my PSP here. I would do a connection, and I would be able to play Destiny on my PSP. Logged into my system at home, playing it through there. Mm-hmm. It was laggy, but it worked. We had really fast internet here. I guess I had good enough internet there at the house. It all worked. Um, and so... I remember, and this was back during when, when, when Destiny first launched, and you had the loot cave. You remember the loot cave? Yeah. So that's all I did, really. It, you know, I wasn't trying to progress. I just went to the loot cave and started shooting. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's all I had to do. Uh, I'd answer a call from time to time, and then I'd back to shooting. Because that's all the loot cave was. It was like, fire your gun into that hole, and just keep firing. And then after ever how many it is, run up there, collect your stuff, go back to your spot, fire back into that hole. Leather rinse repeat? Yeah, it was. They disabled that after a while, though. That was the fastest way I leveled. It was one of the fastest ways to level in Destiny back mm-hmm. then. Speaking of Destiny, let's talk about Bungie for a minute. I, um, I really, really need to find, and I'm going to try and do it, and I think it's going to be a futile effort. Um, I would like to find somebody compiled all the headlines that came out of their announcement for the transmog system. And it was nothing but, I don't want to say complaints, it wasn't. Because this doesn't feel like complaints. This feels like justified criticism to me. And even if it's over the top, it still feels justified. Um, I can't find it here, but their transmog system, they announced how that was going to work in their weekly update that they do every Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't play other MMOs. I don't play other games like this. Apparently, transmog systems have been around for a while. It's some way to change the way your character looks. You know, yeah. we earn armor in this game, and the armor has a certain look. But maybe we don't like it. Maybe it doesn't match the rest of our armor. Maybe we want to look a specific way. We want to look fashionable. Yeah, and the transmog system means that you get to keep everything that you've earned. You just get to change the way it appears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds rather simple. It's something they've been trying to put in for a while, I think. And I believe it's been on the back burner because it's not necessarily a really important thing. Um, in the grand scheme of things, no. It was just, it's just, when a, you're in it's a, first, just a cosmetic thing. Yeah, when you're in a first-person a first person shooter game, you, you rarely see yourselves, although there are times. You see other players, though. Yeah. Um, but who cares what they look like? You know, it's all about what you look like. And you don't see yourself very much. Mm-hmm. Um. From what I understand from other MMOs that do this, and it's probably wrong of me to compare Destiny to other MMOs, not because they have no comparison, but because you can barely call Destiny an MMO. Um, Because it's it's not necessarily what that is. It's not. Mm -hmm. But most transmog systems exist in MMOs. Mm -hmm. And so... That's the only comparison we have as to, like, here's how they do it here. Here's how we're going to do it here. Somebody came up with the idea that they're going to add another three types of currency. (laughs) This is ridiculous. Now, I don't know exactly the way it goes. And let me open up the article here um, so that I can, let's see. There's a resource that there is a currency called Synth Strand which you spend on bounties. Completing those bounties will give you synth cord, which you then take to the loom and convert into synth weave. Then you spend the synth weave on some of the unlocked armor appearances, which will convert those unlocks into use universal armor or armor ornaments. It is one of the most convoluted things I have ever heard from them, and they have spit out some convoluted things in their time with this game over the years, over the many, many years that this game's been out. Yeah. They have said some ridiculous stuff. I'm grateful for the fact that I don't actually care about Transmog. Never have. Mm-hmm. I've never cared about the way my character looks. I will throw a shader on from time to time just to change things up, but I really don't care. Yeah. Uh Shaders, I just get one and stick with it mostly. And it's find a good one that I like, and I just uh, maintain that for the rest yeah, of the time. Yeah, it's strange being. because there's there's it's never been anything on my radar, and I don't think there's I think there's probably a good number of people who it's never been on their radar either. Uh, but then again, there are I would say a legitimate group of people who really really want this to happen. They're very 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 um, concerned with how their their character looks. Yeah. They want it to be a certain theme. You know, before you had to have, there were certain types of armor that if you could shade the right color, you could get something really nice out of it. Mm-hmm. And people would put a lot of effort into that. And the ones who made it look good did a great job at that. Mm-hmm. But I still didn't care, you know. And that's good for them that they did. But it's just, it's not, which I'm grateful for. But as a person who plays Destiny, I can't not look at this and think, what if, what if they extend this into other parts of the game that I am concerned about? Because I don't have any other concerns about the game. But if they start bringing in other things and they look at, well, just do it like we did the Transmog. Add four more materials mm-hmm. into the game and make it convoluted to go around and get it. It's, it's really bad. It gets worse than this. And do they, are they talk about this? Yeah. Um... Let me just start at the beginning of the article. Bungie finally shed some light on Destiny 2's upcoming transmog options in a blog post. The new system will be added to the loot shooter service game within a few weeks. Uh, unfortunately, its implementation sounds like more of a grind than anything you'd find in SSX Tricky or Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I played Tricky, and I never cared about the, how that looked or don't even remember how there weren't that many options in Tricky, was there? I never played Pro Skater, by the way. Might shock a few people. I never played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It was a big game back in the day, but I it wasn't. I never tried it. I think I was, I was PlayStation, right? 
Yeah. Original? I think original PlayStation. Yeah. yeah see, I there was a I had a lull in my gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it was around the time the PlayStation came out. Mm-hmm. PlayStation, N64, Sega Saturn, I was, I was not on, the, uh, I was not on the, the, the boat for those. Yeah. I wasn't really playing games at the time. I was playing SNES, maybe some PC stuff, but I wasn't paying attention to the consoles. I was working at a movie rental place, and I didn't care about what, you know. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just wasn't my thing. I say I was. I don't know if I was doing that at the time or not, but... Uh, so yeah, I'm, I never I never played Pro Skater, but anyway, this whole thing is just ridiculous. Um, he says, "Yeah, my face hurts too." But wait, there's more. If you pick up the wrong bounty, some of the synth strands will be refunded if you choose to abandon it. Abandon it, not the full amount. Some. So think carefully before abandoning your your bounty. What's more, you'll only be able to apply transmog cosmetic options to legendary gear. So you can't apply universal ornaments to exotic armors. They're still going to throw... And that's the thing. They're going to throw you off still. You wear an exotic... I, if you're doing anything in this game, you are likely wearing some sort of exotic on both sides. You either have an exotic on your weapons, mm-hmm. or you've got an exotic in your armor, or you have both. I run with both almost always. Mm-hmm. Because there's got to be something good that is... Um, you know, if I've got if I've got room to put an exotic in there, it's going to be better than anything else I'm running around with for the most part. Yeah, and it's going to help me with whatever the catalyst for the gun is. Yeah, they all give you the they case. all give you perks and whatnot. So uh, yeah. why, why would you so not? Why use would them? you not? Uh, and and so if you can't use it with exotics, that's going to throw off your entire thing. But there are people who don't care about that. They'll run without exotics just so they can look the way they want to look, and that is perfectly fine. You know, this again, this is more for them. I don't care, except in the sense that they carry this over to other aspects where it does affect things that, mm-hmm. that, that concern me. Um, Suddenly you're going to need synth strands to modify your gear. Who All yeah. your gear. Uh, let's see, what else this is this? Um, Bungie says the decision was made so players will be able to quickly identify and understand what exotic perks a player may have in all activities. That's a good idea, but just, see, I'm speaking like I know how to code. I don't. Mm -hmm. My thought would be have it show to other players what that exotic is when they look at the character screen. But when they're out in the world and not looking at a person's profile, Mm -hmm. it shows the way it's supposed to show, you know, with the transmog in there. I I don't know. Uh, It says there's also a limit on how many customization options one account can get. That's dumb. Do you know how much armor and armor ornaments are in this game? Do you know how much weapon and different things in there are in this game? A ton. I am currently holding on to 497 items in my vault because it only holds 500. Mm-hmm. And then every other character that I have, which is all three of them, uh, are almost full in every slot they have for weapons and armor. There's a ton. And they're going to limit you. I don't know. During each season of Destiny, players can earn up to 10 synth weave per class. Bungie says that as a one-time bonus during a future currently unnamed season, players will be able to earn up to 20 synth weave per class. Um, so somebody did the math and said it would take about 33 years worth of Destiny 2 seasons to grind enough synth weave to modify all current armor. And all, and this all ends up where you might expect microtransactions. That's exactly why they're doing this. And because you brought that up, I thought they got away from Activision to get rid of this, yeah. not implement it further. Yeah. But again, the amount of blowback that they've had on this. Now, normally you hear rumblings in in like Reddit forum or Reddit threads, read it on forums, that sort of thing. A lot of the times, news outlets will just post like, "Here's the way it's going to work." Go ahead and have fun. Yeah. Every single news outlet I saw post on this thing, or at least most of them that I follow, it was all negative. Mm-hmm. It was like, this is the stupidest thing we've ever seen for just an appearance type of just thing. Just appearance thing. It yeah. is the most convoluted thing. Um, I tried to look on the bright side of the sunsetting that they did, and sunsetting was a bad idea. It's one that lasted for, I think, a year. In fact, next season is when it goes away. Mm-hmm. So the one coming up May the 11th is when they're getting rid of the sunsetting, and so your weapons can be good again. Or I say good again, but they won't expire. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They won't. 
sunsetting meant that your your weapons could only go so high in level and then they would stop. And so you'd have to find something else to use once you had outlived that gun, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's stupid. Um, something yeah. they never did before. We talked about it. Bungie was always talking about, we want you to play this game the way you want to play it, that sort of thing. But we're going to limit the weapons you can use, which is, yeah. So it, go, it goes against everything they say. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's sunsetting, I tried to say, well, let's see how it goes. And honestly, it's gone okay. I'm glad it's going away because I've found some good weapons now. And I'm glad to know that those can come with me uh, through the seasons now. Uh, I'm, currently, I'm not running anything in uh, my collections on my character and stuff that that would um, would see anything come from from sunsetting, especially now that they've gotten rid of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it took them about a year. It took a lot. I mean, there were and honest, and you'd see posts on on the Reddit threads and forums and stuff saying uh, I'm okay with sunsetting. I think it's a good idea. You know that sort of thing. And uh, you'd have some people who were hey, give it a chance. And you'd have some people who are outright, this is stupid. There's nothing like that with this. <laughs> There's nobody writing anything saying, hey, give this transmog system a chance. Every single person is that I've read is against this complete thing. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Because initially, my, my initial uh, hearing of this is like, that's a whole lot of work for just a cosmetic thing. Yeah. Too much work, actually. And, it, and the mat, it's 33 years of gameplay to get everything uh, set up for, for, uh, for, for a cosmetic change? Mm-hmm. Really? I don't know why. Well, I do know why. The reason they want you to do this is because it's the microtransactions. It's, it's, yeah, it's make, make, make the grind so impossible that you are forced, right. kind of, to go through the microtransaction route. No, that's exactly what it seems like to me. And again, I, I say this, and I'm like, mm, good. This means I won't be... Th- Luckily, I don't care about this, so I won't spend money on it. Yeah. And luckily, I don't care about this, so I don't have to go through the grind of this thing. I'm trying to guess the prices right now. How much would they charge for five a pack of five uh, synth weave? Hang on. All this is in microtrans. At the Eververse shop, the in-game storefront where you can spend real-world oh. money for cosmetic options, you can buy a synth weave template, okay. which includes one synth weave for 300 silver. A synth weave bundle, meanwhile, will give you five synth weave. Those cost a thousand silver. Uh, you'd have to crunch these numbers, and I'm sorry for making it confusing. But then again, most of you listening are probably confused every time we do this. Show. How, I'm trying to remember how much uh, how much a thousand uh, silver was in Destiny. Was it five hundred silver? Bucks? No, five hundred. Yeah, five hundred silver is five dollars. Okay, yeah. So yeah. So if you want to buy one synth weave, if you want to do one piece of armor, it's five bucks. If yeah. you want to do five pieces of armor, it's ten bucks. Mm-hmm. Um. If they make a killing off of this, sure, go ahead. Well, no, I hope they don't because that means. But you know how that's going to go, man. Someone's going to uh, realize. Someone's going to realize how how deep that grind is, and they're going to they're going to go for that money. They're going to go for the microtransactions. If they got the disposable income, they're going to go into it, and then that's a positive for Bungie. They're gonna just going to keep on rolling. Right, right, right. If this works in the in the store in their little store, if this yeah. works, yeah, they're going to say, guys, this is a great idea. Put this in more of your game. Mm-hmm. I, I hope they don't. But somebody came up with this idea, and some other people on the team obviously said, "This is a great idea. <laughs> Go with it." Uh, and then they release it out into the world, and they get dumped on mm-hmm. uh, by everybody. Mm-hmm. I feel like this will be a quick turnaround on them. This will be a quick walk back. They'll revise this this, this sort of thing to change things up. I feel that. But I don't know. They're very close to the new season. So I don't know that they've got time to go back and rework this, if they even do at all. They may let it run for a season, see how it goes, which means we would have it this season which would, and next season. Yeah, and which, would give them, which would give them time to look at, look at how people are responding, despite the, init- the initial uh, response of, this is garbage, we don't like this. Yeah. But if the numbers uh, keep going up of people buying the synth weed from the store... You know, forget forget that initial initial uh, response. They're just going to keep it rolling along. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. So to summarize, instead of just letting you modify your outfits as you please, which is all players want, Bungie instead added three new currencies, a new type of bounty, seasonal caps, and a microtransaction. Uh, one of the uh, 
Destiny experts over at Kotaku, which is where this article comes from, said in Slack, this is some, <laughs> like, the whole health insurance thing through and through, where you have to go through and figure out your health insurance and all this other stuff. Um, it's not clear in Bungie's blog post. One might guess that the seasonal limit only applies to earned synth whereas or as you'd be theoretically able to just buy as many as you want via real currency. Um, they're looking for clarification. In other words... That you're, would fit, by the way. Yeah, you're capped on this many in-game. You're capped on earning, but, but there's if you no buy them, how much you buy. See, people were looking at the press release. I say press release, but at the, the wording of this. It yeah. says earn. doesn't say buy. Yeah. So you could initially, you know, here, you've hit your limit. Now all you can only buy if you want to yeah. change your stuff. Yeah. God, it's stupid. I know they need, I guess they need money. I don't know, man. They had a bunch of money come in from Tencent and everything else. I don't know what they're doing. But... I've seen it really, really annoy a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had to take a break. When we come back, we'll go over the rest of the news. Hopefully, I'll be here with you when we come back. See, I don't know what's going on, but we've lost our we've lost signal um, on our local station here or local television station here to uh, our affiliate to see what's going on with the weather. Um, Music here from Yoku's Island Express. It's called Yoku and the Village. Game's on sale on Switch for like six bucks. I don't know what it is. If it's on Steam, I don't know. But uh, do you like pinball and that sort of thing? This would be good for you. We'll be right back with more in-game chat after this. Back to in-game chat. Music from... Now, we did Abe's Exodus or Abe's Odyssey last week. This is music from Soulstorm, which is the newest of the Oddworld games. If you happen to have a PS5 and are subscribed to PS Plus, this is free for you this month. Which only has a few more days left in it. So if you haven't picked it up, you might want to do that. On the Epic Game Store, by the way, free games for... What were they? Alien Isolation... Great game, by the way. Uh, and Hand of Fate 2. Also, Greg, I don't know that I've actually played the sequel, but I did play the first one, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's cards. Not cards like King of Hearts and Diamonds and Spades and things like that. It's a um, different type of cards. You draw some cards. It lets your character move on a board. Uh, if you come to a board that has... An enemy, it switches into like a fighting thing to where you have to fight the enemies and Mm -hmm. so you can progress. You gain bonuses that way and then you move through and then it goes to a next level. Um, Fun little game. But it's absolutely free on the Epic Game Store on PC along with, what was the other one? Alien Isolation. Mm -hmm. The other one. So, look at that. Sorry, I just came back from downstairs. Everything's fine, but uh, just wanted to make sure. What do we have? We talked about the transmog system, and I don't ever want to talk about that anymore. Um, 
Let's see. Ooh, CD Projekt Red refunded 30 or around 30,000 copies of Cyberpunk 2077. Mm-hmm. We tried to watch. No, we were on Twitch and we are just looking through. And we found Cyberpunk and we tried to watch it. And the first thing we clicked on was a guy who was riding his motorcycle and he had no head. Mm-hmm. You know, his body was like it was into the bike or something like that. It was mm-hmm. it was just bad. Um, and then everything else we watched on there was uh, in a foreign language that we didn't understand. It wasn't fun to watch because <laughs> you couldn't hear the dialogue. You couldn't understand the dialogue. Mm-hmm. So uh, just that's yeah. I'll, I don't know when I'll actually play or buy that game. I, I own the steel book and when it's fixed. Yeah. I should have taken it back. I never did. I have it. Mm-hmm. But it's not ready to play on the system that I have it on. Yeah. It'll still be awfully buggy. Mm-hmm. And take probably a day just to download the updates that I haven't even downloaded for it. So. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, what was that? I wanted to look at this. There was some... This was either Tuesday or Wednesday. It might have even been Thursday. Um it came from uh, you know Wario that I that I follow on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Wario sixty four. Yeah, yeah. He sent something out about there. Somebody noticed that there was a, a movie page connected to PlayStation Plus, um, and and there was a rumor that Sony may be rolling out a, a, a movie platform to go along with PlayStation Plus. Mm-hmm. What we found out is that they are testing a movie and TV subscription service, but they're doing that in Poland. Um. They're looking at maybe something called PlayStation Plus Video Pass, is what they're saying. Uh, According to a report, on the company's Polish website, a listing along with a logo appeared for PlayStation Plus Video Pass. The description stated that the service is a new benefit available for a limited time on PlayStation Plus. The trial service dates were listed from April 22nd this year to April 22nd of next year and be made available to all PS Plus users in Poland. Listing eventually got removed, but it had promo images for Sony films like Venom and Zombieland and a couple of others. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they originally closed, you know, Sony closed the T, was it, what was it called? PlayStation, was it PlayStation TV or something? What was that called? Was it View? View, yeah, 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 that's right, PlayStation View. They, I actually was a subscriber to that for a while and I actually really enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, until I switched over to, um, it was a bad switch, but I guess not necessarily a bad switch since they killed the PlayStation one, but I jumped over to AT&T. Um, basically because I was already on their plan with like my phone. Yeah. And I also had a couple of other things with them, and that's when I switched everything over. Uh, so that's why I'm there with them and got my internet TV. And it gives me HBO Max for free. Uh, which, have you watched that Mortal Kombat movie? No, but I wanted to wait on that and see the response of, uh, from people, and it was like what I feared. Um, I don't mean to, I just jumped subject, but I don't care. It's no, no, no. Uh, it, what, I, what I feared was that um, they were going to take this movie, well, typical, typical thing of all video game, video, basically fighting game movies they make. Um, they're going to veer away from the lore a lot in order to try to get as many people in as possible. and uh, I don't know the lore, however. Yeah, well, I do. I, I only know the and lore from like the first movie to really go through it. And I know there is lore in there, but it's, not, it's nothing that I've ever really paid attention to in a mm-hmm. fighting game, yeah. in any fighting game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it was the, the first indication that they did that was uh, one of the characters that was missing, really. Um, um and how and the reasons why it was missing, uh, we can go into that. We can go that uh, off the air if you if you if, unless you want to talk about it. But um, basically, they're just they're not trying to satisfy. If something the fans goes up, of the you game. might need to talk about it for a while. Oh, no, no. So. Yeah, um, they're not trying to get the. They're not trying to satisfy the fans of the game. They, what they typically do is they try to get as many people involved as possible. People who don't know the franchise at all, really. Mm-hmm. And so they introduced this uh, new character, this guy named Cole Young, who has no ties to the game at all. It's right, just a right. brand new movie, just a movie specific original character. Mm-hmm. And from what I've been hearing from reviews and people who talked about it, the character is just basically bland. No real, there's nothing to make you care for him really. He's just there to navigate the person who doesn't know anything about the lore of Mortal Kombat 
throughout the movie. Right, right. You get to yeah. see it from his eyes. From you you have, have the eyes, you have the relatable. Basically. They, I mean, a lot of movies often have to do that. They have to put in your audience perspective type thing. Yeah, we got to have a guy who represents the audience who doesn't know about the, any the, of this. part of the audience who knows absolutely nothing. So we about can Mortal we can Kombat. explain what's going on, I guess. Because why um, would you watch Mortal watch a movie called Mortal Kombat unless you know the material, the source material that is that is based on? I thought it was horrible. Yeah. Um, with the exception of obviously what Mortal Com- Mortal Kombat is known for, which is the blood and gore and fighting, mm-hmm. everything else about it was horrible. Some of the fighting wasn't that great either, but uh, was still more enjoyable than any other. If there were, if there wasn't fighting going on, there needed to be. You know, mm. this is like I remember when uh, the first more modern Godzilla release. The one, I think that was in 2010. The one with Matthew Broderick? No, 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 no. The, the other one that was done, that kicked off this whole monster thing with Godzilla and then Kong and then Godzilla King of the Monsters and then, remember it came out in like 2014, I think. Mm. You don't remember it all, do you? No. The okay. only, only Godzilla I know of is the one with uh, no, 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 no. Broderick. Yeah. This was the one that came out um, and set up this whole monster franchise thing because they did Godzilla first. Okay. Then they did Kong Skull Island. And then they did Godzilla King of the Monsters. And then they did uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Okay. So, anyway. The main complaint that came from that first one okay. was that there's too many people. <laughs> there's too many people on screen. There's not enough Godzilla on screen. Oh, um, yeah. And it's you, the... S- why it's, do you watch a Godzilla film? Right. Exactly. And that's what I'm getting at. Just like Transformers... We don't like it when there's people involved. Give us big giant robots smashing things. Rock 'em sock 'em robots. Yeah. That's what we want. And so yeah. it's the same thing with this. It's like, uh, we don't care about any of this. Just give us fights. Stop with the talky talky and get back to the punchy punchy. Mm-hmm. Uh which is basically what you wanted. Um So yeah. Uh that's just <laughs> Lethal Migraine agrees with me. Yep, watch Mortal Kombat after work. It's awful. I mean, it's free on HBO Max, so why wouldn't you? give it a look obviously even even mm-hmm. things that are free can still be you get what you pay for not worth it <laughs> yeah so and and with the exception of maybe a few things most of this was not worth it hmm. it's like i i had a, i it's like i needed an alarm to go off every time there was going to be a fight so that i could look up from my phone or anything else because mm-hmm. i was not paying attention any other time until they started fighting yeah and that was it i think uh those the general consensus really was um well, watch it for the fights, and if you're a fan of the lore, you're going to end up disappointed. Well, see, that's weird because I read uh, I read the headline of an article. I did not read the article, but I read a headline of the article that said, "Yes, Mortal Kombat may be bad, but it was absolutely made for the fans." Now you're talking about lore, which I would think would go against if they got that wrong would go against the fans. Mm-hmm. But yet, I've seen on Facebook and stuff where a lot of people are like, "This thing was great. I loved it." And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't agree. Mm-hmm. I really don't agree, unless, of course, they not necessarily amend that, but say, "Yeah, for what it was, it was great." And they're like, "Okay." Um, for what it was. Yeah. Exactly. Well, in in a sense that it's a game, it's a movie based on a video game that had, you know. That's Mortal Kombat. I mean, we've seen this. Mm-hmm. And so, sure. Uh, maybe it was great for that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I didn't enjoy it. So, mm. what's what's weirder is that these people posted that they went to the theater to see it. Like, man, just sign it for HBO Max. You get like a month free or a week free. You can, you can still watch it without having to pay. No, no some, folks still want, some folks still like the movie theater And experience. let me tell you, I was watching it and I thought, man, and it wasn't probably 15 minutes in. Well, no, no, no. The first seven minutes of the movie, the first... the one ev- that, You mean the one they put on the internet for yeah, everyone to see? Everything, everything which, there... Which they said was probably the best part of the entire movie. It is. As soon as they yeah. switch to modern times, as yeah. soon as they switch... Because this takes place way back when. 1619. Yeah, as soon as they jump up to modern times, it all goes to crap. But those first seven minutes, those first, those, that first opening thing was very, very good. Mm-hmm. It, gave, it gave you a promise. It gave you hope. That hey, maybe they're on to something here. That little YouTube series series that was done, Machinima did it. Yeah, um, uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy, I think. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. Far too. better than this film. Mm-hmm. And I was hoping that Legacy would have 
funneled into this thing to say this is kind of what we want here make it happen uh and it feels like they did for the first seven minutes and then the rest of it nope yeah. so yeah there was there's a lot of things wrong with it and i just yeah, yeah. so that was yeah i was debating i was debating it uh this the last week to uh, see whether or not to go see it but like i said i just wanted to wait and see what the uh general response was and i went to some uh folks who uh who saw it and then I went to some trusted review review sites that I, that I looked at and I saw the general thing and it was like yeah it's just what I yeah. typically thought you're not you're not following the lore too too well and uh, you took a lot of liberties with it that I would not have liked but if the action scenes are good I guess it is what it is watch it for the action but not for the lore and if you're yeah. a fan of the lore you, yeah it's gonna it's gonna I mean I, enjo- I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed Tomb Raider better than I did this and I don't even mean I you know I don't mean the Angelina Jolie the other one Vikander <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Trying to remember her last name. Yes. Valander, Valikner. I don't know what it was. It's a very long, convoluted last name, uh, which, you know, how I am with pronunciations. Mm. Uh, from what I remember of that movie, I enjoyed it more than I did for, for Mortal Kombat. Um, was it a lore issue? Or, well, what, for well, Tomb Raider? How, for, for Tomb Raider. How, was it, it was more. The game or the, no, yeah, not the new one, the, like the old game or the new, the newest version? It was, based, was, based, on, it was on, really? based on the newer version. Based on the newer version, yeah. okay. Because you actually, you absolutely. Well, Laura goes through it. Yeah, you absolutely okay. had some set pieces that were ripped right out of the game mm-hmm. uh, or very, very close to it, inspired by. Okay. And you could tell, okay, that's where this comes from. Okay. Um, Lethal Migraine says Mortal Kombat wasn't made for anyone, but they set up a second movie quite well. Yeah, maybe. Um, they, easily they have a treasure trove of characters to pick from. And plainly, well, sometimes that's the problem with with fighting games. One of the issues with a uh, fighting game move, movies based off of fighting games, there's a whole lot of characters to go through, and you're not going to have enough time to go through the story of every one of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a problem with X Men years back. Yeah, you're uh, right. Where, where Storm Storm Halle Berry was the was the big uh, big actress uh, mm-hmm. during the time, so most of us want to focus on Storm. Well, one of the complaints was that how much time did you spend on? All the other characters in there, you didn't because right. she's the headliner. So you're going to focus on her more than anything else. Fighting games the same way. Boy, that way. changed, of, didn't it? Hmm? I said, boy, that changed, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but because um, look who got their own movie out of that franchise. Yeah. So uh, the thing about uh, like and look how many fight- more times Storm appeared in the rest of those films. Yeah. But uh, that's the thing about it. There's too many characters to go through. You're not going to uh, be able to uh, focus on all of them equally and have a uh, be able to tell your story properly. I mean, not in not ninety minutes to two hours. You're not going to mm-hmm. be able to do it. Yeah. So, so like Luther Migraine said, you'd have to set up a sequel to get to get it uh, to get all of it out of there. Well, I think from what we understand, we know that the one of the actors had signed on for four films, and so I think uh, I think that what, what the actor I want to say it was the Sub Zero guy, but it may have been yeah. sp- or it may have been that Cole dude. I don't know. Oh, Cole, uh, yeah. Hmm. The the new character they introduced. Yeah, yeah I, I, I remember the article. Someone signed up for four films, and this based is the, on how yeah, based on how the first yeah. one goes. So they've at they least decided to keep it going. Yeah, know? I think they'll at least get another one out of it. Yeah, um, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, they get some change, make, make some changes to it. I don't know if this yeah. thing it's it's a lot like Destiny, right? This yeah. thing goes the way they hope it goes. They mm-hmm. won't change a thing. Yeah, just keep making it. Right. I think uh, someone said the uh, the best uh, after watching the film, the best film is still the one from ninety two. Yeah, which that guy, the guy who made that one had a, a, at least an executive producer credit, which absolutely means nothing. It means yeah. he got paid um, yeah. for not really doing anything. But he was a part of it. Mm-hmm. Was probably okay with it. I mean, I'll grant it this. It looks better than that one. Mm-hmm. Looks. But, of course, yeah. it would because that's 92. Yeah. Your effects are going to look as best they can for 92 because at that time it was great. I would still, I still say this. The Goro from that film, yeah, I still prefer to the Goro of this film, mm-hmm. only for the fact that it was stop motion. It looked, it was real, yeah, you know. And even even when it wasn't stop motion, they created this. Uh, and I want to say it was Henson that did it. Uh, it may have been Industrial Light and Magic, but I think it was Henson. They created this thing for a person to be in, where it was higher yeah. and could move the arms and everything else. And yeah, practical obviously will always win over, but. Uh, I preferred that. It's a lot like, I think, what they did in the remake of RoboCop, where they made Ed 209 a CG thing. Mm-hmm. But the Ed 209 that was in the original RoboCop yeah. gave me nightmares as a kid. Just because it was a real thing, and the way it was animated, the way it was 
stop motion done. I don't think the way it sounded really. It, I mean, and that it, too, it, but it gave yeah. it this unnatural, like, ah, oh, man, it freaks me out and it just stuck in my, it burned into my head. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. A lot of the times I tell, you know, I, we come in here and we talk about, oh, they're remaking this, they're remaking that. Oh, you're going to ruin the original. I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that logic of thinking. The original is still there. There's it, it changed nothing of what I remember the original. Mm-hmm. You know, if I want yeah, that, I still, got, yeah, I still got a copy of the original. Yeah, I can fine. go back yeah, and watch. I can go back it. and I'm watch fine. it. Yeah, I'm good. It doesn't matter it, it, because if they do make something that is great, go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, then I'll have two that I can watch mm-hmm. and 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 have experiences with it. So I'm I'm perfectly fine. With people trying, I don't mind that at all. It's just, mm-hmm. it's not going to, well, the new Ghostbusters movie, people are like, ah, leave it alone. It's good as it is. Wow, they tried to do this already. No, no, no. Do it as many times as you want. You might land on something that actually works. I'm mm-hmm. perfectly fine with that. And if not, I still got the original to watch. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. It does not hurt me at all. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, I've talked to way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to Chris. Hey, Chris. Uh, so y'all have, y'all, so have you seen it, uh, Scott? Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, I saw it too. And I saw it in the theater. So I think the only thing that was did you good, okay? You went. Why did do you do you have an X, HBO Max subscription? I guess no. Not. I just went to the theater in okay. Montgomery and saw okay. it. I'm at yeah. Like you said, I pretty much agree with you and and, and everybody else. Uh, I love the beginning. I love Kano and the ending with Scorpion, and I think that's the main highlight to, to it from my point as well. You know, one of the things they said about the review that I saw, Kano, it was like. Yeah, pre- pretty much. Kano pretty much dang near saved the uh, film. The, uh, his yeah. his uh, his uh, portrayal in the film. I mean, he didn't save it, but he, he well, no, he I mean, made he, it better to go through. He made yeah, he uh, he made the experience more worthwhile. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah his I his, mean, yeah, his attitude and his co- you know cockiness, you know, like he was. You know, he played. I think he was probably just as good, if not better, than the original character that played Kano in the first movie. Uh, what did you say? Yeah. yeah, I wish they honestly. Um, I didn't know, but I was I was. I heard he was really good with it, and I knew he had that accent, and I thought, which I think is Australian. Um, yeah, Australian. And I was yeah. really hoping they had got uh, the dude that played Judge Dredd. Um, slipping in my mind. He's in The Boys. Carl uh, Urban. Carl Urban. That's who I thought it was. That's who I was hoping it was. Because uh, I thought he could easily, he really, really is good. But, you know, Carl probably looked at that and said, pass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they probably went to him, said, you interested in this? Nope. Mm-hmm. Um, he's fine, but uh, but yeah, you went to the. Th- how many people were there? Where uh, did you Where did you go? Many. I think they had. Yeah, I went uh, Friday night at seven, the last uh, showing at seven o'clock with a. You know, they had you no. Know, I don't know how many. I think they were doing you know like the COVID thing that they were. They were I know there's space. I know they still. They don't, I know they don't fill to capacity. But yeah, I was just it, curious. It wasn't full. It was. It was very. You know, it was very light to what we used to be. You know, years and years ago before all the the craziness occurred that we've been experiencing. Well, not for a Friday, yeah, compared to what a Friday night would have yeah. would have brought. Because I'll tell you now, I'd have been in the theater watching this uh, in, 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 in the before times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's the only way I would have. I, I'd have had to have gone, and I would have gone to a theater to, to see this. I totally would have given it a chance, spent the money to see it um, easily. I'd have been a little nervous about it because obviously – I read everything leading up to it, and people were like, yeah. eh, just be careful, and you're going to be... Yeah, it was enjoyable. You know, the fight scenes, you know, you know, all the fighting scenes was really That's good. It. You know, the storyline and stuff, yeah. I didn't really like too much. Too much talky, not enough punchy. And, and that new character, Lord have mercy, at the, at the whole time, I was leading to believe, you know, he was going to become Scorpion for some reason, and then that turned completely around, like, where is this coming from? I'm like, this guy's not in Mortal Kombat. I don't ever remember him, and I'm not a big fan of this, this game series. But no. like you know, like RJ and my buddy Mason have been fans for years, and I've just been following along since they have played it and everything. But I think, where is this character coming from? I don't ever remember him. No, he's just a movie. He's just a, a movie specific original character, the guy that knows nothing of what's going on it's, to steer the uh, steer the people. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. that uh, Netherrealm steer the people who don't know anything about the about the lore. Basically. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting that Netherrealm Studios didn't have something to announce to lead into this thing, like oh, go see the movie, and by the way, we have something coming out in the fall or something. Like attach a trailer to the end of it mm-hmm. for the next game in the series, whether it. And I think in, I think it's Injustice that's due for a for a third one now, right? 
Yeah, they about do. Yeah, it's been because I think because they kind of they kind of hopscotch, right? It's like Injustice, then they go, which is the DC fighting games, then mm-hmm. they go Mortal Kombat, and then they go Injustice again. I guess I don't know. It seems like it seems like Injustice is due, which is fine. Again, NetherRealm had a hand in this. It's all Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. so it would have been nice to have something attached to that. Hey, Chris, we're about to have to go, man, but we appreciate you calling in. Yeah, I did like the fatalities. They, 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 I remember those from the old first and second game. You know, in the arcade, and those were. Uh, bring Bob Bright some good memories that they actually put the blood and guts in the movie, like the. Oh, they uh, really put them in there too. That was oh, that was yeah. good to see. That was and I know that sounds horrible. That was good to see that they really. No, it's Mortal Kombat. You're supposed to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah the, the original Mortal Kombat was for the kid and teenagers. Uh, this one is for the adults that know the storyline and want to see the blood and gore that were in the video games. Yeah, that's true. That is true. All right, y'all have a good afternoon. You too, Chris. See Take you. care. Bye. 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 All right, folks, that is going to do it for us. We are out of here. Thank you so much for joining us in the chat room and putting up with everything that's kind of been hectic during the show. Uh, We do appreciate you guys sticking with us, and and thank you so much. Um, Thanks, everybody, in the chat room. Didn't get a chance to do a roll call here. Just go to ingamechat.net. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to Twitch. Uh, We'll be here next Saturday as well. Have a great week. Thanks, everybody. Here's music from a game. This is... Every piece of music in this game is like 20 or 15 seconds long, so you're going to hear different variations of music in this, but it's all from a game called Mr. Prepper. You have a house, you build, see how it fades out and then it comes right back in? Uh, You have a house, and then you have an underground part, and you build your shelter. (laughs) And so, yeah, that's what it's called, Uh, Mr. Prepper. Have a good one, folks. We'll see you next Saturday.